T invariant. And it's the projection onto the T invariant vectors. I, I won't give a, a full proof of hardly anything, actually. Um, how do you do it? You start writing... You can write H as the sum of the kernel of T minus the identity, which is closed, and the image, the closure of the image. And, well, okay, these guys in this kernel here If H is in the image, then you can write H is equal to uh, Tg minus G for some, for some G in L2. And then if you apply this sum here to Tg minus G, there's a telescoping sum. And so, in fact, uh, it's very easy then to see that everything in the image is actually killed by this, these AN vectors in the limit. And Professor Rao gave a lovely proof of this for his students last week. And I think the rest of you probably have seen this proof before, so I'm not going to do it in full detail. But I would like to make a uh, comment. This is supposed to be a curly I. So by, by T invariant, I mean that the measure of T minus 1B, symmetric difference with B is equal to 0. Do I want to call it B? Anyway, that'll do. So if I think slightly probabilistically, then this projection is in fact the expectation of F given I. So that's my first ergodic theorem for today. My second one is called the mean ergodic theorem, which is an L2 ver uh, LP version of this. So x b mu t is as above. So in these averages here converge in LP. So I'm not stating it. in Hilbert space we've got nice contractions, but for LP uh, we've got this. So this follows directly from the 
L2 version, plus the fact that you can actually bound these things above their averages, so you can bound them above by, say, the L infinity norm of F, and then you use dominated convergence theorem to deduce this theorem. So, yes, it does work in LP as well. For people who are interested in LP, you can use these kinds of things. So that's my second ergodic theorem for the day. I thought it might be a good idea to do an example. So let's take the circle group and let's take r rotation through an irrational angle alpha. Um, if f is in L1 of t. So t tf uh, x is equal to f of x plus alpha, modulo 2 pi, whatever. So in L2. The operator has eigenfunctions e to the 2 pi i x with eigenvalues i alpha x. So uh, therefore, you can use some Fourier analysis. I had to have some harmonic analysis in my first lecture, obviously, uh, to uh, show that So H1 is therefore the, the one-dimensional space spanned by the constant function 1, and therefore this system is ergodic. And H one complement is the um, and uh, so we can deduce that 1 over n, the sum from k, equals 0 to n minus 1, f of x plus n alpha converges to the integral of f dx. So there's your very first Fourier series application of the ergodic theory. The next question. Um, that people asked was, what about pointwise convergence? And I, because I want to apply this later to uh, amenable groups. I need some version of a 
I'm going to explain that on the next blackboard over. So there's Birkhoff's theorem. It's a, it does have some form of a contraction, needs some, some, something like that. But however, it, it holds for quite general uh, operators in Hilbert space, or not in Hilbert space, just operators of measurable functions. I would like to tell you what an L1 in L infinity contraction is. And it's very clear that compose, composing F with a measure preserving transformation satisfies both of these conditions. So, uh, but, but provided you have those two conditions, then you can actually prove convergence to a function which is L1, L infinity. In order to prove this, however, you needed something a little bit more sophisticated uh, which is the use of maximal functions. And maximal functions, of course, have been crucial in a lot of harmonic analysis developments later. This is one of their earliest uh, points where they got developed, I think. So I'd like to tell you next about how many ergodic theories, theorems have I told you? Just two so far. Now I'd like to tell you about the maximal ergodic theorem, which uses maximal functions. Do I finish at 20 past 12? Is that right? Or does anybody remember what time I'm supposed to finish? Thirty minutes. Oh, excellent. Hmm? Forty. Yes. <laughs> of course, one's used to giving one hour lectures and these one and a half hour lectures. So, um, let me tell you about Banach's principle. I'm so, I'm going to. So supposing we've got B, I gather there, there is an operator theory conference going on in Chennai at this very moment, and so uh, we're setting up in opposition to that, uh, 
conference here and having some uh, operator theory. Uh, we've done Hilbert spaces, and now we're moving to Banach spaces. So let's suppose we have a Banach space B and the vector space of measurable functions on some measure space X B mu. And supposing we have a sequence of linear operators which go from the Banach space into um, this space of measurable functions. And we'll define the maximal operator A star maps F in B goes to A star F I write down here, can people see? I'll write in big letters because it's important, I suppose. Soup of n greater than or equal to 1 of a n f absolute value. So you just take the values a n f at x, you take the supremum as n goes to infinity of that. It's a very general um, Then the conclusion is A n is continuous in measure for every n greater than or equal to 1. And the set of all f in B such that A n f converges mu a e is closed in b so this is a theorem of banach which i'm not going to attempt to prove um, but this is one of the early places where maximal functions were used and it was done slightly before hardy and littlewood did there work on maximal functions. Maximal functions were highly... So using this theorem, we can then prove that our next ergodic theorem, which is the ergodic maximal theorem.
So um, we've got x, b, mu, t as above. Oh, no, just x, b, mu. A measure space, we've got a, n, the sequence of operators. The line on the Grassmannian. Sort of the, the um, final element is a group, which we call gamma plus, which is just the group of functions. Um, so it's an abelian group, e to the sum, the parameters are ti, z to the i. So it's, in other words, it's exponential of a, of a series acts on uh, L2 of the circle, implies on the Grassmannian also. And you're already seeing some, I mean, going from here to here is already complicated because you're acting on all the vectors at the same time. And you're acting on L. And you can define tau, tau of tau zero. Choose a plane, a base plane, tau zero, tau n. Okay, to be what? Well, it's going to be, um, ah, one last element. You can choose a basic section here. <laughs>